Hey everyone! Happy Sunday, happy weekend. Thank you for joining me today on this live, uh, free live workshop that I'm hosting to teach you all about layout, uh, a simple layout uh, that you can do on your Procreate or pen and paper that you can apply to your chalk lettering work. So I'm happy that um, you're spending some time tonight or this morning with me and I hope it's gonna be a fun one. Um, if you have your materials ready, do um, get them and then um, do it with me so you can try your hand at creating a lettering piece. So today we'll be doing a simple layout and um, I asked my followers on Instagram a couple of days back what the code to, uh, that we will be writing today. So I got a lot of suggestions and uh, I'm gonna be selecting one now. So I don't know if you can see my phone, but there were a bunch of um, submissions and um, I think we're gonna be doing, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but we're gonna be doing this one by Miyauru Kawaii, Love Never Gives Up. So thank you for um, all those submissions. Um, there were good quotes, um, but this particularly resonates with me right now. And um, I think it's a good time to spread love instead of hate. So I think um, this will be a good one to hand letter today in this live session. So uh, if you're joining us, thank you so much. Um, we, you can also type your comments on the live chat. Uh, feel free to interact with me and the other watchers too. Uh, where are you watching from? Tell me and then um, we can talk about it as well while I do the layout. So the quote again is love never gives up. So let me just switch to over to my screen, my iPad, so I, you can see what I do um, stroke by stroke. So as I draw the thing, you'll be able to see what I'm doing as well. All right. So now I'm switching over to my iPad screen so you can see, still see my face on the left and uh, yeah, you can still see my face whether I'm actually having a hard time trying to draw the layout or not. All right, so on my screen, I have um, two different canvases. The left, the left side is Stars Don't Shine Without Darkness. So I did this before as part of my um, Easy Chalk Layouts kit. So I in that kit that you can download on this link, uh, bit.ly slash easy chalk layout, I'm showing you the step-by-step -step, uh, procedures that you can follow to create your easy chalk layouts. So having seen this layout, you would you would you probably wouldn't realize what sort of layout I, layout I use, but today I'll be using the same layout that I I did in this um, composition and I'll be showing you how to fit the words that we selected earlier into this layout. So uh, if you can see my screen, the layout is actually this. Are you surprised at how it looks like? So we'll be using the same layout for today's demonstration, for, for today's workshop. So uh, at the top, you have uh, an arc. In the middle, you have a circle with a rectangle in the middle. And at the bottom, you have a con concave convex. Okay, my, my English is failing me right now, but please bear with me. We're going to be doing lettering in not English. <laughs> All right. So this is the layout that we'll be using today. I'm going to switch over to the other canvas so you can see how I try to figure out how the lettering will be for this uh, particular piece. So again, the quote is love never gives up. So I will create a new layer. And on this new layer, uh, I'll hide the other layer first. So in this new layer, I'll basically plan out the words. So I'll, I'll write down love never gives up, All right? And then from this, we need to identify which are the important words. But because there are mostly just uh, four words in this quote, it's not going to be as hard as uh, if you want to lay out longer words or longer phrases. So let's change the pen to a different color so you can see. Uh, I feel like 
the most important words would be uh actually all of them are quite important so i'll just box them up so i can see roughly how much space it's gonna take i don't want to split the words uh gives up because they go they go together um you wouldn't want to read love never gives and then up i mean if, if it's just four words if you can totally do that you can totally split it up split it up as well but i feel like um when you're reading it it's more natural if you read it as love never then gives up because it's um, flowing nicely like that so um yeah I, i'm i'm watching the live chat too so um do let me know if you have any questions um thanks for watching eat sleep and write and ron i i can see you guys so feel free to follow the process and if you have any questions along the way i'll answer them at the appropriate times during the stream so now we have um selected the quote and we have boxed up the letters um i'm gonna look at my layout again and see how i can fit up these uh, shapes so we're gonna look at these as shapes and not as letters so we will try to fit them up nicely in this layout what I'm gonna I'm gonna do next is to create a thumbnail some thumbnail sketches I'm gonna create a new layer so the good thing about pro using procreate for your layouts is you can easily create new layers and then preserve what you're already working on at a, a lower level so you don't have to erase all the time so creating new layers is also a good way to redo an existing part of the layout if you're not too happy with it and then you can still retain the original copy so we created a new layer i'm just gonna make smaller versions of this layout And I'm gonna hide the bigger one. So now we're gonna try to fit the the shapes into this layout. So I'm just gonna duplicate this so it's easier for me. So I can move the other layer on this side and then move this on this side. So now we have three of the same layouts. We'll just gonna try to letter some stuff here it's just gonna be a rough sketch to help you identify what works and what doesn't work because it's only four words and it's basically three main shapes it's easier to see how you can fit them all in the layout so while the layout looks like this i don't necessarily have to use all of the shapes in it especially if we have a shorter face to work with so i can just uh do it in a very simple way like uh love love here then the never fits here then the gives up fits here then i i don't necessarily have to use the circle so if i want um, to use the circle then i can probably do something like this but then again it doesn't seem to gel well because like i said earlier gives up is probably better together than separate so um i'm just gonna keep it here if um, i change my mind later on or maybe i'll just um, do love then never then gives up then maybe I can do some like illustration here. What do you think so far? Um, for me, I'm feeling like it's better to go with the first layout. Uh, there are a bunch of circles that, um, semicircles that are not utilized. So I can either put some semicircles here or I can change it to other types of embellishments later on or I can even try to squish it so I'm gonna duplicate the other layer which is our thumbnail sketch and then see whether I can actually just try to fit the letters without using the circle 
So this is the thing with layouts. It's a lot of experimentation, especially when you're doing it um, for the first time. So even when you're a seasoned pro, it's still good to try out different different ways of combining the layout. So right now I erased the semicircle on top and the semicircle at the bottom to just keep the general look and feel. Let's see whether this works better. Uh, to me, it looks a little bit better because um, there's no unnecessary space here. Just It just so happened that the quote we selected is really short. Is really short, so I feel like if um, there's less space in between, it's more readable. So I'll probably go with this. But um, the good thing about working with Procreate is even though I feel like I want to do this style later, uh, for now, later on I can always shift them around because I have different layers that I work with, right? So Ron was saying it's more balanced than the first one. I agree with you. So I'm just um, not too sure about the spacing between love, never, and then the words gives up. So based on our initial thumbnail sketches using this layout, we can probably go with the last one, right? So now that we have selected a layout that we're quite happy with at this point, it's okay, we'll try to make it a little bit larger and see how it affects the whole illustration. So I'm just going to group all of these together so it doesn't hinder my view. What I'll do is I'm also going to just unhide this layout and I'm gonna use white because my layout is of a colored background. I will hide this and then go with this approach. Love never gives up, right? So, right. so now we have a clean working area. We will now be trying to do the love never gives up in that fashion. So what I'll do is create the words on three different layers so I can easily move them around later on. So I'm going to create three layers, one for love. Then one for never. So I'm typing with an inverted keyboard, so it's uh, a little bit more difficult. And give some. So um, it's good to label your layers as you work on them, so you're not confused which one is which. So I'm just gonna be doing a quick one. So this is our sketch all right so our work work area is quite clean so now I'm gonna click back on the layout uh, for love so I'm gonna try to fit in in the shape so I'm gonna do a script style for this layout then Never. Then gives up. So I can probably change the G to a capital G like this, just to help illustrate the layout that we're selecting. Mm, as you can see now, uh, the word never is bigger than the rest, mainly because this, the rectangle is bigger. I, I probably will make it a little bit smaller just because I want the word love to be a little bit bigger so I can adjust it later on. I'm not too sure about these parts at the moment, so um, I'll leave that for now. I'm going to create a new layer to see whether adding some florals here makes sense. Hmm. 
Mm, it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. I'm not too sure if I want to create florals there, but let me just hide it for now and then see how I can uh, utilize the space a little bit more. So the top, as I mentioned earlier, is an art, right? And with an art, I can actually maximize the space with use, using a lot of different flourishes and swashes. So in this case, if I want to make it a little bit fancy, because this phrase is, I feel like it's elegant in itself, and I want it to have a lot of flow, so I want to create more flourishes and swashes to make it more elegant instead of just a basic script like this. So I can probably maximize this space right like this. Yeah. So just make sure you're working on the correct layer. So I can do the E like that. Um, I can do the V like that. So I'm keeping my options open for now. I'm not too bothered by I'm not too bothered by the width for now. I'm just trying to see what kind of works and what kind of doesn't work. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm probably gonna make this never a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller just to make it look more visually balanced and the thing with this is because it's just four words um, you don't really need to highlight some of them um, if you were to ask me depending on the style that I'm going for I could either highlight love so make it bigger and more contrasty compared to the other words or never it depends on how I want to say it it's like think about it this way do you want people to read it as love never gives up or do you want people to read it as love never gives up so it depends on what your purpose is um, to me you can go either way um, I'll probably make love a little bit bigger um, just because I prefer using positive reinforcement uh, in my lettering work rather than the negative connotation so I'll probably use uh, love uh, as a bigger word rather than having never as the bigger word so those are some of the thought process that I'm having as I'm trying to create the layout and it's always good to think about what you want the end result to be and not just um, think about it as what looks pretty um, because it's important to look both at the aesthetic side and the purpose side so Having said that, I'm just going to continue making this uh, never word. I'm just going to try to to see how I can fill in the, the shape. So I'm not too worried about making it perfect because I can always update it later on at this stage we're still um, just trying to make the thumbnails a little bit bigger and then refining it as we go so note that we already probably took around 15 minutes doing this no it can take you more or less time it depends on how your mindset is that day or it depends on if you have um, like inspiration that day or maybe you're feeling bad so you don't have any inspiration so your mindset really affects how you do the layout too yeah okay so if I remove the layout layer it looks like there's a huge space in between so I'm most likely gonna follow my original plan which is to just remove the semicircle on top and the semicircle at the bottom so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the layer for our layout so I can keep the original uh, layout in mind later on and then I'm going to uh, use the lasso tool to kind of uh, oops I'm gonna redo that so I'm gonna remove the semicircle 
select and then I'll just drag it out of the canvas and that kind of uh, removes it from our view and removes it from the canvas. I'm going to do the same, select the lasso and then click on the selection tool to remove it. Right. And now I can select this layer along with love. So I'm going to select both layers and then click on this. Oops, sorry. Let me redo that. So I'm going to select uh, this layer and then select the top part and then just put it down a little bit. And then select the bottom part of the layout and move it a little bit to the middle. Then I'm going to follow suit with the words to see whether it looks better like this. Yeah, I think it looks better like this. So I'm um, probably going to keep it. I'm still taking note of the amount of space that I have between the letters and between the words and around the letters. So in the layout that we selected, in the layout that we selected, there's also a blue line in the middle to indicate the center. And uh, for most layouts, having a centered layout is a really sure way um, to to make things more balanced and uh, more symmetrical. And that's one tip that I usually give, um, especially to beginner letterers who are struggling with layouts. Try to keep everything centered and it will immediately look better. Then as you get more comfortable trying uh, the different styles and the different layouts, you can play, or play, play around with them, right? I'm not too happy with the sizing at this point, so I'll probably just gonna see whether if I make it a little bit smaller or this love, I'll make it a little bit bigger. So I'm just, just trying to see what kind of works. Okay. So when you resize, you can always use your fingers or you can use the handles at the corners or at the edges too. So don't worry about whether it's centered or not at this point, it's just very rough sketches. I think I'm quite happy with this uh, for now. So I'm gonna try to refine it because uh, when you try to look at it like this, sometimes it looks good, sometimes it looks bad, but when you try to refine it further, you will see that um, there were there are some things that you don't like about the layout that you can still adjust or even though you like how it looks right now maybe as you refine it you're not satisfied with it so to me i'll just um, keep this in one group and this is my sketch number two so i'm not going to re rename it anymore but um, i if you want to rename it you can do so what i'll do is I'm gonna duplicate this by dragging the layer to the, the the group to the left. I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna keep my original sketch as a backup in case I wanna go back to it later on. And then for this new group, I'm going to flatten everything, but I will take note to remove the florals first. So I'm going to delete that layer. I'll flatten everything up, and then I'm going to use this as my basis for now. So now that I'm more interested in refining this piece, I'm going to turn the canvas settings on um, for, where is it? I'm going to turn on the drawing guide and this drawing guide will help me center my piece and it will help me see whether I'm following along the correct axis. You can edit the drawing guide by selecting other stuff as well. Um, for me, I usually just go for the 2D grid and then you can just adjust the grid as you see fit. So this circle marks the center of our layout and it looks like our, our work is slightly off center, but that's fine. This is what the grid is for. You can also turn on the assisted drawing to make sure that your your letters or the the shapes are 
are locked into that grid but I'm going to turn that off because I'm just more uh, used to not using that. You can also change the colors of the drawing guides. I like to keep it teal or cyan. It could be cyan. Right. So now that I have that set up, I can keep this uh, layer here. I don't mind keeping it. Then I'm going to make this less opaque so what I'll, I'm going to do is I'm going to double um, to use two fingers to tap to tap the layer and then it will show the slide to adjust at the top that is an easy way for you to adjust the opacity of your work so again you can use two fingers to tap gently tap the the layer name and then it, it will show you how to reduce and increase the opacity so if I reduce the opacity, it will allow me to trace over it a little bit better, All right? So it's just going to um, serve as my tracing. Imagine, uh, think about it as uh, having a tracing paper on top of your existing work where you use the tracing paper or layout paper to trace over what's underneath. So it helps you refine your work further. going to keep this uh, layer on I'm just going to adjust the top part to make it a little bit bigger because I want the word love to be a bit bigger so at this point I'm just going to center all of these along my center grid I hope you're following along and if you have any questions do let me know in the chat I'm reading them and I'm going to answer them at the appropriate timing so right uh, now we're going to slowly ink create the outline of the words love so for me I'm not afraid to go beyond the grid line and uh, it's just a guide for me but I can pretty much eyeball and see whether it fits nicely take note that I'm compensating for uh, the fog calligraphy that we're going to do later I'm making the letters a little bit thicker than usual and I'm also conscious about leaving enough space in between the letters so for now it looks like the L is okay, but um, I'm going to move the O here a bit. Just so I can make sure I can leave enough space for the O later to, so I can thicken it. Then for the V, I'm going to leave some space here just so I can make it thicker later on. Yeah. So either that, nope, this one is better. So don't worry if you're still um, uncomfortable with doing the strokes, that's fine. That, that's the reason we're doing lettering. We're not doing calligraphy. So you can go definitely go over the letters one more time to make it more refined. Right? So as you can see, the word love um, is gliding over the shape that we defined. So for this word, I'm going to keep it in one layer, then I can just refine it later on. So I can use this, okay. I think I'm going to use this letter style. For now I can change it later on yeah okay I think it might work so I'm going to draw the E and the V and then the E then the R 
so at this point um, you can either just strictly follow the layout that you selected or you can slightly adjust as you see fit so uh, as I wrote the word never uh, I, I don't want to constrain myself with just the rectangle so I can actually uh, make the V go up like this if I so want to or I can just bring the R down later on so I haven't really decided yet so I'll just keep it like this let's write the words gives up so for this one I'm going to try to constrain them into the shape first and then let's see what happens okay it's taking a little bit of shape so what I also like to do with my script lettering is to make sure that all of the angles are aligned when I slant them along an angle that makes it a little bit um, neater in that sense so I will do that now and create a new layer and bring it down I'm going to use a different color so I can easily see and at this point I'm just going to draw a bunch of diagonal lines like this make sure that they're all aligned. You can also use um, some brushes. There are some brushes out there that you can purchase which allows you to draw angles, um, lines like these. But I, I want to draw them each time, so I'm okay with it. But if you find that it, you're having a problem drawing these lines, then you might consider getting a specific brush for that. So using the same technique, I'm going to uh, use two fingers to tap gently on the word layer, 17, and then slightly adjust the opacity, bringing it down. Then I can now make sure that my letters are aligned along the same angle. It will just make it a little bit more professional looking. Right, so most of my letters follow the same angle, so that's good. Only the word never doesn't seem to follow. Oops. I'm going to select the lasso tool and select the word never. Adjust it because it doesn't look centered. And rotate it slightly using the handle here. Okay, now it looks better. Then finally, let us try with the gives up. So this is also a little bit off-center, so I'll move it to the left slightly. All right. Now at this point, I can keep the guides on, I can keep it off. I want to turn it off for now, just so I can see how it looks like. It doesn't look as nice yet, so let's try to make it thicker. I'll bring the lines back on again. Okay using white I'm going to thicken the strokes now yeah so if you have any questions while you're doing this on your own let me know yeah don't be shy don't be a stranger this why I'm here now is um, to help you with your layout and to see, uh, to allow you to see through my process. So because we're doing script lettering, uh, take note of where the thick and thin slide. If you have to change the size of the brush, do so. So I'm going to erase this part and then 
adjust it a little bit so don't be afraid to make mistakes because it's not going to be perfect the first time around so you can also use uh, two fingers to turn the canvas around and that will help you draw the lines and the shapes easier okay. I'm going to thicken the word never so for the end it's this center line that's thick I'm going to erase this Right, slowly taking shape. Yeah, so just a reminder again, the guides are there for you to help you, but it shouldn't constrain you to do what you feel is going to be better for your composition. So in this case, for me, I'm making subtle adjustments to the way I use the grid so I'm not being constrained with the rectangle so for example this end I'm going over it beyond it for this uh, however for the base lines it's uh, it's better if you keep everything consistent across all the letters so for this E it's way below the line so I'm going to adjust that I'm going to adjust this as well to make it hit the baseline then this end I'm going to adjust it a little bit just to hit the baseline so all of them are sitting along the baseline hello Frank thanks for tuning in I hope you're picking something that you can apply for your own creative projects So don't be afraid to make mistakes. At this point, uh, I'm just making it thicker so I can see where I can still improve it. I'm still not totally sold on how the letters are formed and how uh, the spaces are. So I might uh, think of other ways to improve the lettering, but still keeping in mind that we're using the same layout as uh, what we wanted originally. Right, so now we're at the last couple of words. So for the V, it's also slightly off from the angle, so I'm adjusting it as I go. So because um, this last row is convex or concave in, we need to compensate for some of the words too. So some of the, I mean, some of the letters. So the more it's uh, towards the center, the more it should be uh, squished. The more it's um, around the edges, on the left, on the right edge, it should be bigger. So we probably need to compensate for that visually as well so I'm going to make the E and the S a little bit smaller just to give that illusion that it's concave yep. okay so for the up it's also not following the angle so I'm going to adjust 
that a little bit using the eraser. Then the P, I'm going to use the lasso tool to select the whole P and tilt it on its side. Okay, at this point, I feel like the last row is quite squished already because of the concave shape so I'm going to compensate for it by making it a little bit bigger and at this point I'm also going to move it slightly to the left because it's already angled at uh, a very steep angle so all of the words uh, all of the letters are going on this angle I want to move it slightly to the left so that when I look at it visually it's centered so I'm going to make it bigger on the left side. Yeah. So those are some of the small decisions that really add up later on. So now I'm okay with the slants. I'm going to remove it to see what else we can improve on. Earlier I said that I want to keep the word love a little bit, a little bit bigger because I want to focus on the positivity. But when you look at this layout, the word never still pops up. So let's consider making it a little bit smaller using the layers again, uh, the layout layer. I'm going to make this smaller. So I'm using the lasso tool and then the selection tool to make it smaller. See what happens. All right, it looks a little bit better. It's not centered, so I'll just move it a little bit to the left. So most of the time when I try to look for the center, it's following the visual balance. I keep the guidelines there just as a guide for me, but I still rely on my eyes to look at it and make sure that it's centered. So the gives up word is also a little bit too near the center the word never so I'm going to bring it a little bit lower just to match the spacing in between the letters so if you can see I'm going to turn off the layout so imagine there's a shape here that is for your spacing your white space if I fill it in Oops, sorry about that. It's not properly closed. So if I fill the shapes in, the space in between the word love and never should be around the same as the, the, uh, the spacing between never and gives up. At this point, it seems like love and never has more space, a little bit more space than the bottom words. So this is one way for you to see how to adjust the spacing. Just draw over the white spaces and see how uh, you can adjust the spacing from there. So this is one helpful tip that you can do. So because I'm selecting this layer, I'm not afraid of selecting the color layer. So I'm just gonna go over it and move it slightly, slightly lower. Right. Actually this color quite playful uh, hmm. let's see if I want to keep it for now I'll keep it and hide it so I'm gonna put back the layout again if I remove it you will see that I'm going to create a layer so I can illustrate so it's concave like this concave like this right but But because this space is empty and this is not empty, it looks like it's leaning more to the right side. 
So I'm going to uh, move it a little bit to the left to compensate for that. So either that or I'll just introduce this uh, swatch here and then maybe just instead of doing this kind of G, I'll just bring the G lower. So it's similar to this side. It's going to be a little bit more symmetry. So either I'll just do this or I can loop it later on. So I think I'm going to do this instead. So it's a little bit more symmetrical with the other side, right? So I'm going to hide it, go back to my letter, change the color back to white, and I'll just bring back the layout. Adjust it to the left so I can see what I'm missing. Yeah, so this is uh, an illustration of how beneficial it is to work with different layers on Procreate because you can just basically adjust certain portions of your lettering layout and you would still be fine. And look, I still have all copies of my my previous sketches below so it's saved there in case I want to go over it later on. So I'm going to change the way the G looks like just to compensate for what we have on the right side. So I can do it like this or do it like this and then the, the up I'll just exaggerate too. So it looks a little bit more symmetrical and balanced. Then the, the P, I'll probably accentuate it as well. Yeah, so it's slowly taking shape. For the word love, I'm not too happy with how the L looks like, so I'm going to move it a little bit to the left. I think it's also too slanted and too small, so I'm going to adjust and make it a little bit bigger. And then adjust it like this. I release this part and yeah, there you go. Makes all the difference. I think the letter N is also a bit wonky, so I'll make it a little bit bigger and adjust the angle all right so i hope you're still following if you have any questions don't hesitate to let me know <clears throat> yeah all right once in a while i'm toggling the the layout on and off just so i can see how it looks like <clears throat> now it looks like the words gives up is bigger than it should so I'm going to turn it back on and make it a little bit smaller you know what I'm gonna create a duplicate so this is a copy I'm gonna save it for later and then I'm working on this layer instead so I always like to keep a duplicate layer to make sure that I'm able to like if, if imagine you're like playing a, an RPG or um, or any game so basically it's like a save point you can always go back to your save point in case you're not too happy with whatever result um, of your decisions are so this is a save point I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because of all the swashes it's now taking up too much space. Right. Okay. So in order to accentuate the, the curves of the layout, uh, what we can do is to add a little bit of 
try to add a little bit of embellishment on those to accentuate that so let's see i'm going to create a new layer and then put all the additional swatches there so i can play around with it so let's see i'll use a different color so i can see the So I want to accentuate this and this, so we'll see how we can do that. So either I can do this, connect it with the ligature, just so we can maintain the flow here. We can also extend the G a little bit, yeah, what do you think? Then this one, like that, just so it gives a little bit of balance. Okay, maybe it's too big, so... Yeah. So as you can see, it really takes a lot of time to figure out direction that you want to go for even though you already have an initial plan in place it's still gonna take some time to find what the best layout is or what the best composition is so even though you already have an existing layout you still have to tweak the letters to fit in the layout and to fit your overall purpose so because I have introduced a lot of swatches now on the words below I think I need to do the same thing on the words above so it's a little bit more balanced. So what I can do is to since I exaggerated the the swirls, I'm going to exaggerate it on the words above as well. So don't be afraid to experiment. So even though you have an original layout, feel free to break free from the layout to find a better solution to your problem. So I'm going to just figure out how to exaggerate some of these as well. I think I'm going to exaggerate the E. Not too happy with how the V looks like, so um, let's see. Keep it like this. Hmm. All right. Um, the O is a bit too structured. So let's see. Yeah. Then. Oops. Low battery. How come it's not charging? Sorry, I lost my screen for a while. I'm not sure why it's not charging. Just give me one moment till I figure out why my iPad is not charging. So I hope you're doing well with your own layouts too. And uh, give me just one minute to bring my iPad back. Alright, it's back. I'll probably make this G a little bit bigger too. Just to ensure that our eyes think of it as a capital letter. Now I'm thinking what to do with the other letters because in the last two words, I had a ligature for V and the U, and it looks quite nice, but it doesn't really gel well with the other two shapes above. So either I consider joining some of these letters too, maybe I can join the N and the L, do you think? Yeah, I think that works. And then... 
then for the E maybe I'll just bring it down here just to fill in the space a little bit yeah yeah because I'm trying to fill in the space now I'm not gonna be too restricted with the layout I used so I'm gonna exaggerate some of the letters already and Looks like it has some potential. Right. Kind of like where it's going. So, what I'm going to do is to make this turn this into a reality. I'm gonna put this up. So now I can see the white letters instead of. The adjustments that I made and then I'm gonna try to adjust the white letters to sort of mimic what we did with the pink colored one or the salmon colored one so let's adjust it like this then move it like this yep grab the eraser tool and see how it goes yep there's some merit to it. Alright, let's exaggerate the M a bit. This part should be a little bit thicker. This part should be a little bit thicker. Let's exaggerate the contrast a little bit. So like what I said earlier, don't be afraid to make mistakes because this is still part of the exploratory refinement phase. You don't have to commit to something just yet. Okay. If I turn this like this. Yeah, it's looking much, much better now, I would say. Yeah. This end has to go further down. This R has to go further down as well. Then this G has to be a little bit bigger. You can change the size of your brushes too. Okay. It's just a very rough sketch. Let's see, let's turn off the pink colored ones and put it back on and then see where we still need to adjust. Yeah. Okay. If 
think it's taking shape. Um, maybe I need to accentuate this a little bit more. Yeah, so just so it looks a little bit more balanced. So right now, the words gives up uh, is slightly off center. So I'll just adjust it a little bit. Alright, I think we're getting somewhere. Yeah, just going to adjust the words a little bit more before I go to the final stage, which is like uh, refining the final art. So uh, at this point, I'm just trying to find what the right spacing is and what the right embellishment is, so it or so what the right swatches are, so it doesn't look like it's too much going on. So making that um, decision as I go. I'm not making this too perfect just yet because I feel like I, I still want to take it on a slightly different direction. So I'm reserving my final comments yet. Okay, at this point, I'm not too happy with this part, so I'm not gonna make it as a ligature. Instead, I'm gonna try if I can do it like this instead to fill up the space. Okay, maybe, maybe. Don't be afraid to experiment and allow the letters to tell you stuff that you never thought about before. <clears throat> so this part, I'm going to use the lasso tool to adjust the angle a little bit. Okay. Now the G looks a little bit small, let's make it bigger. Because we made the U a little bit bigger, we have to make the G bigger too. Also to fit the space, uh, to make sure that there's no, not too much white space in certain areas. So remember the technique that I showed you earlier, which is basically to color in the the white space to make sure that you're not leaving too much space in one area and neglecting the other part. So because I can see that there's a bit of space here, I'm going to make the G a little bit thicker just to cover for that area. Yeah. All right. So now, uh, okay, it's looking a little bit better because this piece uh, already has a lot of swashes. I'm thinking of just accentuating them a little bit more. And because my style recently, I've been trying to use a similar style for all of my lettering pieces recently 
I'm also going to do the same thing for this lettering. I'm going to use a leafy style of script for this work. So I'm trying to f see what, where I can create the leaves and the additional swirls. But this is generally how you play with an existing layout so even though you've seen the layout we have earlier right which is this one and this is the same as the layout that we have for our other work even with the same layout you can totally create a different looking piece altogether So it still fits our layout, uh, original layout. Right. So now I'm gonna use this as a, as my save point. I'm going to duplicate this and hide it for now. And then I'm going to make all my changes here. So I'm going to reduce the opacity, try to create a new layer, and trace over it. So there's also a lot of tracing involved when you create lettering pieces even on Procreate. So for this layer, I'm going to try to make it a little bit more perfect and being more careful with the curves that I'm trying to draw. So I uh, notice that I'm tilting the canvas as I go because it's easier for me to draw that way. And undo is your best friend. So if there are some strokes that you're not too fond of, you can always double tap the screen Use, using your two fingers to undo what you just drew. Yeah. So now we're going to do the end. So the thing with script lettering is you have to follow the letters, shapes. So in this case, I'm following the curve of the top part of the E and making sure that I align my letter V with that too. So it looks more pleasing to the eye. So don't be afraid to try different ways of doing the same thing. I feel like I want to keep this and then I probably want to keep something here too just to make it a little bit balanced and then this one is like twins we'll see how that goes later but let's do the last two words right now So as I'm trying to write, I'm also doing bigger movements with my whole arm instead of just using my wrist to write. Um, that allows me to create bigger circles and bigger ovals with one stroke. So if you have any questions with the process or any questions with Procreate, let me know in the chat and I will answer them.
right let's thicken the strokes now so thickening the strokes for for calligraphy or script lettering there's no one right or wrong way to do it I usually go for the left side but it's really up to you as long as the letters spacing between the letters uh, and within the letter itself is quite consistent and if you want to learn more about fall calligraphy I invited um, Joyce from Artsy Nib Studio and we'll be talking about that in one of my next YouTube videos and it's coming soon so uh, if you haven't yet do subscribe to my channel so you're notified of any future videos that I release specifically to what you have requested so that's one of the most requested things too that uh, people want to learn is fall calligraphy which is basically what we're trying to do now so as you can see I'm trying to be more consistent on how I thicken the letters or the downstrokes and the upstrokes are not thickened. So only those downstrokes are thick. So this part of the swatch is also thicker because it's going down. This is some embellishments, this is going down too. This is going down. It's also going down. So don't forget to try to make each of the letters have the same thickness, especially within the same word, so that it looks balanced and consistent throughout. better now so for capital letters usually they're thicker than the small letters so do take note of that as well then um, while there are certain rules to follow of course um, along the way you will have to break some of them too to come up with a, a beautiful piece Right. So notice when I color in the, the letters, I don't use the color drop tool because I want to keep the texture of the chalk. I mean, I can totally do that too for this eye, but if you can see, it looks weird and it doesn't look like it's fully colored in like how you would the chalk. So I would instead just color that in myself. Yeah, same with this. I can just color drop and then it will look weird. So just choosing to color it and then ink it on my own. Yeah, so thanks for joining me today. I hope this is a interesting session for you. It gives you a sneak peek into uh, my process for creating a lettering layout. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes since we started the live. 
and normally it takes a lot longer for me to create something especially if it's for a client work because uh, for client work you have to be more perfect and um, you have to ensure that it actually meets the client brief too but since this is uh, something that I'm doing just for me for my own pleasure I want to see something that I want to see on my feed so I'm that's what I'm thinking of right now also if you're new to, new here and uh, you haven't seen the easy chalk layouts kit I you can also download it uh, on the link that's uh, shown on the video right now So a while ago, I mentioned that we can break some of the rules. Uh, most of the, uh, the the thick strokes should be on the down strokes, but there are some portions that I want to emphasize and therefore have to make a little bit thicker too, just f purely for aesthetic purposes. And those would be the endings of my swashes. So similarly for this P, I want to thicken it a little bit just to emphasize and make it uh, more aesthetically pleasing, at least for me. So I'm going to thicken those two. And this one as well, just as so. Uh, it feels like more leafy to me. So I'm going to do that for the endings. Right. So now that I have refined that a little bit, I'm going to remove the lower layer and see how it looks. Right. So I'm quite happy with how it's turning up to be. I'm going to adjust some of the letters individually to compensate for the spacing. Uh, I can see that some of the letters are not as thick as the others, so I'm going to adjust them one by one. like. If I physically draw on something here, like a circle, and I move this circle around the thick strokes of the small letters, I can roughly see which ones that are needing some adjustment. So that's one small tip right there that you can do for your own lettering. So because I can see that it's not the same thickness, I can adjust the letters a bit more. Right, so I'll move this circle around just to make sure. Okay, so this V is visibly not thick enough. So this uh, a useful tip, especially if you're doing some client projects. The same thing for the ups, uh, the uppercase letters. You can do the same thing too. but you have to use a bigger circle. So I enlarge it a bit, then you can uh, just move the circle around too. Okay. So since this is just a quick demonstration of how you can do your layouts, I'm not gonna try to make this too perfect so we can just see the final output in a faster time. Okay, this also lacks the editing swatch that I was talking about earlier. Right. And right now, it looks a lot better from a while ago, I must say. But um, the never and the gives up seems a bit too cramped at this point. So if I try to illustrate to you, what's, what I mean about that is look here right it looks a lot more spacious than this right so what we need to do is to adjust the words uh, gives up bring it slightly lower so I'm using the lasso tool to carefully select on the words just bring it slightly 
Okay, so now you can see it's it's more balanced. We can see that the thick strokes are consistent, the thin strokes are also consistent, right? And yeah, so now that we have this, we can start thinking about the other embellishments or other elements that we want to put in in the lettering layout. You can put in some lines like this. You can put in some like florals here. So that one is really up to you. But uh, my personal preference now, since I'm trying to do a leafy style of lettering, I'm going to make this uh, look a little bit more like leaves. So as mentioned earlier, I'm going to create a save point. So this is my last save point. And I'm going to go over using this layer. So I'm using the eraser to create a, so I'm using the eraser, I'm going to select my brush or, let's see, okay, let's choose the, okay, I'm going to choose the chalk one, bring it, make it smaller. Then at this point, I'm just going to simulate some breaks in the leaves. And then introduce some venations as well by lightly gliding over the letters. to introduce some venations here and there to make it look more like leaves yeah. So, yep so if you have any questions at all with the process let me know in the chat be happy to answer them for you for now uh, we're almost there it's this is like step four out of five it's refining the work and trying to add some embellishments on the lettering piece so the embellishments that I selected are leafy uh, venations so those are what I'm trying to achieve with this so you can slowly see that the textures are adding a bit of character to our letters yeah so I'm going to add more thicker venations like this to emphasize some sections so don't grip your pen too hard so you can create a lot of different textures even with the same chalk so I'm only using the same chalk as I've used since the start of this workshop I've only used one type of chalk uh, brush but I'm able to create a lot of different textures with the same brush. Thank you for um, staying through up to this point. Just um, rushing a, a little bit because we're about the 1 hour 30 mark and I know you must be tired also. So I just want to try to show you how the finished product will look like. Of course it's not perfect because 
we need more time to make it perfect but at least you get to see the whole process until the end Sorry, just used the wrong color. Just glossing over this very lightly. So bear with me for a while and we'll try to finish this in the next um, 10 minutes. So one of the things that I'd like to think of, so after we have turned it into a uh, venated leaves, we can see whether we want to add some shadows and other embellishments. So the colors I selected would be this salmon. So either i can add a bit of leaves here and there so let's see what happens i'm going to move the layer down so it's behind the letters let's see what happens I like that it's sprouting a little bit either that or we can do a shadow so the earlier layer is here what we can do is since I back this up I'll duplicate it again then keep it as a save point then I'll create a layer and drag this color on top of it so what this does is I can turn it into a clipping mask to change the color of what's below it's underneath and then I can slowly move it to the left or to the right and this easily creates a shadow effect it's simple but it works so I can change the color of the shadow too I can change this to this light blue I kind of like the salmon better because it's more feminine it's it says love never gives up more than the blue all right so I'll delete this circular thing and we have this 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 and this I'll group this and this will be our almost final layer I'll group the rest also and this is our drafts so let me just rename it to one so i know that this is likely going to be the final one and I'm going to move it so that it's centered so this is one tip you can just group them together and select it and then use the selection tool to make sure everything is centered and you're basically moving the whole piece so at this point i'm trying to lift my my work up and looking at it from afar trying to see what other stuff that i haven't seen yet I, you can also turn it around to see the spacing more clearly i kind of like how it looks like right now but um let's still see whether we can add more or whether we need to add more you don't really have to add more but let's just see where it takes us okay so a while ago I did the small leaves right here let me try that with another color so I'll bring the new layer here and create some small leaf sprouts
trying to be as natural as possible for how the leaves are going. Yep, I, I think I like where this is going, so I'm gonna keep drawing some more leaves in different colors. in the different nooks and crannies of the letter. So it's basically saying like love is sprouting and love never gives up and I think that's a really great message and having these leaves help make that point. too big so I'm gonna dial it down do you have any more questions for me while I try to refine and create the embellishments here rather concentrate on those that go slightly up. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just basically filling in the different shapes, uh, the different white spaces, and see whether it looks good in that part, and then adjusting along the way. small dots like pollens so I'm gonna put more of those trying not to overdo the leaves sometimes you get too engrossed with doing this that you basically just turn everything turn all the white spaces to to letters or embellishments that it might look weird already so I'm just trying to be careful not to overdo it It looks kind of Christmassy. I like it. looks more elegant now we've so now you've seen how we have turned the layout into something like this and even if you only have a very simple layout with three square boxes or three rectangular boxes you can still create something like this and if you still want to put in more embellishments sure go ahead by all means just um, Take care not to overdo it so I can potentially just put in some more lines like this just to create the flow 
and drive the eyes towards the curves just seeing where it goes basically and oops, trying not to overdo it too and I'm just basically filling in the extra spaces within the letters so it doesn't to look too empty. Right. I'm not too sure I like these small accents. So let's try to remove them. What if we create a new layer and let's see. If I create like small ex small stems like flowing out of the letters what did it look like is it too much is it too little I think this is pretty much it. Um, I'm just deciding now which one I like better. Is it this one or is it this one or is it without that one? I'm leaning more on the cleaner version just so to make the letters uh, speak from, for themselves. So the last thing I want to try is to add some texture behind. So I'm going to create another layer and use a different chalk. Then I'm tr trying to create some chalk dust behind. Let's see if it's going to make it look better. Okay. So the opacity is too low. So let's try to to use a different brush mm -hmm. not trying to overdo it then I can use the same technique we learned earlier to reduce the opacity and see whether it works or not Maybe I'll use a different brush. So let's see. So there are a lot of brushes you can purchase online too. I'm going to see which one works best for this purpose. Um, we can maybe just keep it clean. Yeah, I think I'm happy with this. So this is basically how my process to creating a lettering pieces. Now we can turn off the drawing guides and if there's anything else that I can do with this, I'll probably make some of the thin lines a little bit thicker, but I'm actually quite happy with how this looks already. I'm just going to move it slightly up and that would make it visually centered too much right. yeah so that is it for this lettering workshop on how to use a chalk layout demo I hope you enjoyed our session today thank you so much for joining me and um, lettering with me I am so happy to do this for you and I will see you again in the next videos if you haven't yet don't forget to download the free easy chalk layouts kit it's um, at bit.ly 
slash easy chalk layouts and when you sign up to my email list you can also get some surprises and gifts that I don't share anywhere else so that's my exclusive chalk fan so I'm gonna see you there and I hope you enjoyed today's session thank you so much for staying through up to now and yeah I will see you again next time